guys, Ryan here, GTA Projects. Today I'm going to show you how we built a uh, air dryer system using a simple copper plumbing pipe. Um, we've got two air compressors in the shop and we're going to connect them together, as you can see in this diagram, to a simple T-piece. All the fittings are half inch BSP and um, quite easily available. These are the little ball, uh, ball valves that we're going to use to drain any condensate out of the lines. And we're just using simple copper piping, 50mm uh, copper piping with uh, elbows and T's to create the piping. What I've done is I've uh, designed it as eight uh, pieces of pipe. They reach a meter long and they go up and down. And that allows any moisture to, if any moisture travels in, uh, upwards, uh, it'll want to drain down. And hence, if it gets to the other side, um, you've got you've got many, you've got five uh ball valves in order to drain out any condensate. So by the time it gets to the water uh, filter, the, the, the trap, um, it will, the air should be 90% um, dry and any uh, moisture left over will obviously be taken care of by the, um, the filter in the uh, water trap. Um, so these are some of the bits and components that um, we're using for this build. Um, we, we, sh we will be putting together a kit shortly on GTA, which you'll be able to purchase um, if you'd like to put something like this together. Um, obviously, this one's set up for two air compressors, but it could be quite simply made for one. Um, instead of having a T-piece, uh, you just have a simple elbow or um, just a straight coupler. Um, so yeah, I was just showing you there, we're going to use the, um, the 90 degree uh, elbows on the end of the compressor tanks and then the two ball valves on each side so you can isolate the each each compressor independently um, and these are just the standard T's and elbows that you get in any plumbing, plumbing supply store um, over here I've got a half inch uh, port uh, water trap so that's quite a nice high flow um, diameter there uh, and then the that's the uh, flexible hosing that we're going to be using, which is also uh, I think it's 13 more uh, uh, internal diameter, so that allows quite a lot of um, airflow, which is great, uh, a lot of volume, which is great for your impact wrenches and HVLP spray guns and DA sanders and things like that. They require a lot of volume. Um, the uh, filter regulator valve that's um, fitted to an air compressor is generally fairly restrictive so if you're running straight out the tank um, it's always good because you can increase the volume significantly um, so here I've basically put the um, the pipework together it's a fairly simple process if you've ever done any um, uh, plumbing work on copper on copper pipework or just a bit of soldering uh, you need, you need a, a decent sort of butane propane torch some soldering flux and uh, solder and then um, pipe uh, brushes to clean and some steel wool um, and you should be able to uh, do it fairly easily. Um, it's, it's a nice inexpensive way of doing it and it's robust and it's safe um, but obviously if you're not um, good at this sort of thing then maybe it's best to get someone else to do it for you um, as you're obviously dealing with high pressures. Um, so basically, I'm going to run you through how, how I do um, copper pipe work. I'm not a plumber by trade, so um, there might be things that one or two of you might spot, which um, if you are a, sort of a plumber by trade, that might uh, not be uh, perfect, but uh, I seem to get the job done and, and works fine and I didn't have any leaks. Um, so basically start off, make sure everything's really clean using steel wool on all the pipe ends and using the wire brush inside the fittings. Heat up the fittings, it's always good to have everything um, sort of set up already and do as much of the soldering as you can in one area because if you, if you uh, do one fitting and then go and assemble the one next to it and then do that one afterwards as, as possible that you can crack the solder joints in the uh, in, in the fitting that you've done previously. So as you can see I've got everything sort of laid out there and I'm doing both elbows in one hit. Um, so it's important to keep the, um, the heat quite consistent and even across the fittings. Um, you obviously don't want to overheat it but you want to get it hot enough so that the solder melts. Um, obviously, don't want to use too much solder. 
uh, one or two of the joints that I did had a bit of a drip at the bottom, but yeah, it's um, they worked really well and there was there were no leaks. Um, you don't want to overload it with solder, and obviously once you put the solder in, you don't want to heat it up too much further because it tends to cause all sorts of dirt problems. Um, uh, it seems to burn the solder. So, um, but yeah, that's pretty much what you're left with. Don't want to, as I say, don't want to put too much solder. It kind of due to the capillary action and the heat, it kind of draws the solder in with the flux into the fitting. So um, obviously, uh, it's normally about one centimeter or so per fitting that of solder that seems to work quite well. Just drying, uh, uh, cooling the the, the the fittings down a bit uh, using some compressed air. Uh, wait a few seconds before you start so that the solder can sort of set and then slowly um, at, at a low pressure blow some air over over there just so you can get it cool enough to handle quickly. I wouldn't use uh, a, a wet rag or anything like that because you could sh could cause it to crack um, so just go easy with this part and uh, don't burn yourself. Probably best to wear gloves and a, um, a pair of uh, safety goggles just in case you get any so sort of solder or anything in your eye, um, and afterwards just give it a good old brush over with a with some steel wool, cleans it up nicely and gets rid of any of the flux residue. Um, and as I've heard, flux is acidic, slightly acidic, that um, you know it might uh, cause problems in in the uh, in the future. And uh, that's it, really. I'm just following the um, the diagram that I that I designed. So I obviously had a really good idea of how I wanted to do it and. How big the final product's going to be, um, and that's kind of where 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 I was at that stage. Um, so over here, as you'll see at the bottom there, it's made up of a few T pieces, and just cross referencing the diagram to make sure everything's still how it's supposed to be. Those bottom sections are where the uh, ball valves are going to go for the drains, and here we just use this simple. 15 millimeter by half inch compression fittings, which seem to work really well actually. I didn't get any leaks from any of them um, after running the system up to full 10 bar pressure. So um, just test fitting them there, making sure all the fittings that I have are the correct size and they all uh, all in good good uh, condition. Um, I didn't have the correct size spanners for these pipe for these pipe fittings because I don't normally deal with them, um, but tend to get away with the, I think it was a 22 or 24 mole spanner and, a, and an adjustable seem to seem to work uh, well enough. Um, so there's the, the ball valves. It's important that they're stainless steel because as it's going to get moisture inside it, you want them to last fairly long. Um, we'll have to see how long they last, but uh, they, they should be good. Um, and if not, you can always swap them out if they, if they cause any problems. Um, I don't tend to get too much uh, condensate in our, uh, from from our system anyway. Uh, I'm not sure if it's because it's indoors or or what, but um, we we get quite minimal um, uh, water out the uh, out the trap. So um, basically, just running through, uh, double checking everything. That's going to be the inlet side, I believe, um, and I'll, I'll just run you through how I solder and get this. Um, prep this for soldering um, fr from the beginning. So here we go, giving it a good old clean with some steel wool. Um, it's important that once you've cleaned it, uh, that section that you do not touch with your fingers because obviously your fingers have oil and dirt on them and that can cause uh, problems with the soldering. Uh, add a little bit of flax, not too much, just make sure it goes all the way around. Um, and then I think on this occasion we're going to be putting a T piece. Um, oh yes, so obviously we're going to have to cut some little short sections of pipe. Uh, this is going to be for the inlet, that's the outlet side there, just taking a measurement. Uh, it doesn't have to be 100% accurate. Uh, I've got this little, I think it's a Rothenberger, something like that, um, pipe cutter and it's just preset for a 15 mole pipe. It's really simple, really quick. Literally, just pop it onto the pipe and turn it around a few times, and then you end up with um, the the pipe nice and chopped. Um, so I was just showing you over there. There's burrs inside the pipe, which should best be cleaned out with a deburring tool. Um, unfortunately, I didn't have one, 
so I didn't bother and uh, I haven't had any issues with any whistling sounds of air rushing through the pipework or anything like that so that was lucky because um, I was kind of concerned about that but um, yeah I didn't seem to need to bother with that which was great because that's obviously a bit of a time saver um, so I was just test fitting the um, the pipework there checking I got everything correct because I guess um, once you've soldered it and um, you've got to make any changes it's, it's, it's kind of kind of difficult to do because you've got to sort of desolder it and clean everything up again so it's best to just get it right the first time so the best thing is to measure twice cut once and just keep referring to your drawing and, and you know just making sure that you've, you've got everything correct um, so obviously cleanliness is the most important here most important thing here to make sure that your um, your soldering uh, gets into all the little nooks and crannies and uh, you get a, a good joint so and that doesn't that, that doesn't leak because it'll be a shame to get everything all done up and to find a little pinhole leak or something and that's generally due to a bit of dirt and grass um, and not, not cleaning your fittings properly and not not, not putting flux so yeah, just putting on the T-piece, finally soldering it on, adding some heat with a torch. Um, you can pick up these torches pretty cheaply, actually. I, I can't remember where I bought it, um, but it wasn't wasn't too expensive, and it actually works pretty well, to be fair. I've had it a good few years, and uh, done a fair amount of soldering with it. Not too much. I'm not, not a, a plumber or anything like that, So, um, but just for general hobbyist use. They seem to be really good. The uh, the igniter switch that didn't last very long, so I just use a lighter or a match to get it started. Um, but that doesn't really concern me too much. Um, so yeah, adding a little bit of solder here, um, then a little bit of heat just to get the uh, the solder to travel um, into the gaps. Um, fairly straightforward. Probably best to give it a, a few practice tries before before you uh, work on your project, if you haven't done this before. Um, and as I said before, if you are not confident in your abilities for this sort of thing, then maybe it's best to get a plumber to do it for you. Um, shouldn't cost too much, uh, it's, it's fairly straightforward. I think the actual soldering of this um, pipe work actually probably took about two, two and a half hours um, from start to finish once I had all the materials collected. So it didn't take too long. So yeah, just just blowing off the um, the uh, the pipework just to cool it down a little bit. As you can see, doing it from a bit of a height just to uh, make sure it's not getting cooled too quickly, which could cause problems with cracking, I would imagine. So um, sort of ease into it and keep the pressure low at first, and then uh, and then go to town, I guess. Um, yeah, because you. You want to make sure you do this afterwards. I, I mean, I, I like to do it because um, I'll make sure that the fitting's cool and I can get on with the job um, instead of having to wait for it to cool down naturally. So yeah, I decided to mount it onto a block of wood, a uh, panel of wood. Um, main reason for that is, first of all, I'm going to be mounting it behind our stairs, um, which is plasterboard. Um, so, you know, messing about the plasterboard and trying to get all these little pipe clamps onto the plaster to stay on the plasterboard is a bit of a pain. Um, so it's much easier to do on wood. And then second of all, we're probably going to be moving um, our premises at some stage um, in the near future. So we'd like to just take the, the one sheet of wood with the fittings and the pipe work attached and sort of just unbolt that from the wall and uh, take it with us. Um, probably be a lot simpler in the long run. Um, so yeah, just a couple of pipe um, saddles I managed to, to get fairly cheaply um, and they're really easy to install, just a wood screw and um, and that keeps all the pipe work in, in, in place. And as you can see, I've mounted it here under the stairs where, where, where our compressors are kept. Um, there's obviously a stud running there by that seam where I've managed to uh, uh, screw the um, the panel down to and there you can see the little t-piece which is going to be used for both of the compressors to um, input into um, there I'm just showing you the um, inspection holes on the uh, compressor tanks so we're going to be removing those fittings um, sometimes they're fairly tight so they could use a little bit of uh, persuasion to get loose um, but 
one thing to keep in mind is just to try a few little uh, tips that I'm going to show you. Um, one being a bit of heat. Uh, don't go too mad on the heat. But um, and obviously, whenever you're using a torch, keep a fire extinguisher handy. Um, and you want to make sure that there's no pressure inside your air tanks when you're removing these because they can shoot out. A um, bit of um, lubricant, a bit of heat, and a few um, liberal blows with a, a couple pound hammer um, will normally break the, uh, the, the threads on these so, um, and, and get them sort of turning because they can be quite sort of locked up. Um, but just take your time with it. Use a really good quality um, uh, breaker bar and a good quality um, Allen head socket. Um, don't even give, don't even attempt this with a, just a normal Allen key. You need a proper socket with a with a breaker bar. Um, these uh, fittings on the end of the BT three hundred and ninety and BT one hundred and fifty T Burish compressors are um, half inch BSP. Um, so you need to make sure that all your pipe work is um, the correct size to be able to, to fit in there. I'm just using one of the uh, uh, wire brushes that we have lying around to clean up the threads a little bit. Um, it's always good to have clean threads because they can be a bit sort of rusty and dirty um, after a good few years of use. Um, and just to make sure that the new fittings thread in there nice and easily and uh, that they, they seal up nicely too. So a little bit of uh, thread tape um, on all the connections that you're going to make. The only place that you're not going to use thread tape is on um, any of the compression fittings. Uh, well, you will use the, the thread tape on the outlet of the compression fittings, but obviously on the, um, the, uh, the side with the compression ring, you're not going to be needing any thread tape. Um, so just showing you here on the top one how we um, basically you fit the, the elbow to the ball valve first, Make sure that the handle turns in the correct direction so that it's moving away from the compressor tank. Otherwise, you won't be able to open it. Um, so just pre sort of pre-fit and have a little think about it before you start tightening everything up, because you might find when you put it on the compressor that you know things are upside down the wrong way around. Um, so that sort of saves time in the long run. Uh, I'd probably do about ten to fifteen wraps of um, PTFE tape. On each of the fittings and I ended up with uh, not one leak um, at the end of it. Uh, there was one leak but it was actually due to um, a Jubilee clip that I bought locally and they were just utter trash. Um, wouldn't be buying those again. Um, I actually had some really good ones with, um, Jub they're not Jubilees but they, they sort of pipe clamps and they got a um, the bolt on the side and it sort of clamps it on the side there. You can see it in my right hand. Those are much superior than a Jubilee, Jubilee clamp. Um, and they seem to work and hold, hold the pipe work really strong. The problem with the Jubilee clips, they, they need a lot of um, torque to keep these large hoses on. So you torque them down with a 7mm um, spanner and uh, they end up just stripping the, um, the pipe, um, the, uh, the runner on the, on, on the clip. But yeah, w one thing to note with threading on this large diameter hosing is that um, you can do the one side like this and to sort of thread it on the other side is a bit difficult because you've obviously got the, um, the tension in the hose so that doesn't want to sort of spin and turn um, and you'd obviously get a really twisted hose and it wouldn't be very easy or in fact probably not possible to, to tighten it all the way because you'd have to twist that hose so many times. So the best thing to do is to do the one side up, which I found, and um, then on the other side, you in. I'll show you now, but I, you install the um, the barbed fitting onto the compression fitting first, and then you push the hose on to the barbed fitting once once the um, compression fitting is installed on the pipe work. Um, otherwise, if you if you do it the other way around and try and fit the compression, uh, thread the fitting into the compression fitting afterwards, uh, you'll, you'll see what I mean. It's, uh, it's, just not, it's just not possible because the pipe needs to twist so many times. Um, so here, just removing the compression fitting from the inlet side. And um, so it's important not to tighten these too much because you can damage the little compression ring. Um, so probably hand tight and then a good half a turn 
Um, but yeah, basically just don't bear down on it too much. So as you can see here, the I've attached the fitting to the hose already. This is not the way to do it. You need to disconnect the Jubilee clamp from the um, from the hose and then thread that into the inlet side and then afterwards you push the hose onto the barbed fitting and tighten up the Jubilee clamp and um, that, that's probably the best way to do it. So here we are, uh, the final stage of the process, installing it onto the inlet side and a uh, fairly simple job. You want to make sure that these hoses don't sort of vibrate around too much. It's uh, maybe a good idea to, well, it's a good idea to have a bit of slack in there just to allow for any vibration. Um, and obviously try and keep all of these hoses and things out the way of getting knocked because you know people walk past and trip over the hoses and knock and, and knock the fittings and they can break off and you can get sort of an escaper pressure which could sort of scare people or hurt people. Um, so yeah, just this is the basic setup now. You obviously got your ball valve on each compressor, so you can isolate each one if need be, and they're both teeing off into the um, system. And then I've just showed you the outlet side, which is fairly straightforward, a similar process. And then we've installed our um, filter regulator. And that's pretty much the setup. I'm really impressed with, by how it performs. The, uh, the volume flow out the uh, airline now is much better. Uh, significant improvements on uh, air tools such as our DA and Impact Wrench. I gave them a quick test this afternoon and I'm um, very impressed with the performance. It, it, to me, it's at least a 20-30% hike in performance. So guys, if you like this video, please like and subscribe. Um, and obviously, if you're interested in any of the, um, the, the products that we have here, uh, do visit our online store, gtair.co.uk. And if you have any comments or questions or suggestions, feel free to put them in the comment section below.